really emotional about it when you challenge uh, these beliefs. And your challenge may not be, an, you know, you're wrong. It may just be, you know, well, I believe this. And, and it may be taken at, as an affront by merely stating that you believe something that's different than, than theirs. So I, I, I determined at that time, um, probably again, we're looking at uh, mid, middle school going into high school, that uh, it was very important to um, embrace different belief systems. Um, not embrace, let me rephrase that. Um, to uh, respect people that had uh, various uh, belief systems. So in high school, um, I went to a Lutheran-based high school, and I was still a, a Christian by the time I got to high school. Uh, but I remember um, we were forced to read the Bible um, in high school. We had to take religion was the only course that we had to take every single semester. Um, so we had to generally, generally, we would have to pick up a verse from the Bible and then talk about how important it was. We had this one. <coughs> We had to talk about the importance of Jesus. So the rest, you know, normal kids, normal kids, right? So the, the most of the kids in the class are like, oh yeah, Jesus is important because of something that you've probably been told. And um, we had uh, a few a few Jewish children in the in the school, um, and one of them happened to be one of my classmates. And so she said, well, I don't know how to do this assignment because he is of no importance to me. I'm Jewish. And how to explain this to the teacher who was just not really um, understanding of her position on it. And I, although I had some understanding, I didn't have any um, people who, I guess, in my family and among my friends who out and out, I guess, didn't feel that Jesus had some type of importance in their life. And so this was the first time for me that I, I heard someone say, well, just, it's of no significance. And um, when she said that, you know, she wasn't struck by lightning, which was shocking <laughs> to me, um, being the Christian that I was. And uh, I was also concerned about the grade. I'm like, well, it's not fair that she gets a bad grade because she's been misled. Um, at least that was my thinking at the time. Um, so, and I really liked her as a person. I'm like, well, she's not a bad person. So that was one of the experiences that I had in, in high school. Um, high school was also a, a deconversion time for me. That's when I kind of moved from theism. It, was, it wasn't just that experience. That was one of my experiences. But it, it was more so reading the Bible. And um, I have some, uh, at that time, growing up in New York, I had some, uh, one or two friends that uh, were gay and also um, a, a family member who was gay. Um, openly gay, and uh, being gay was an abomination, and so reading that in the Bible was just not acceptable, because I, didn't, I knew that these people were good people, and that they did not strive to, to cause harm to others, and um, I didn't believe that a good God, the God that I believed in, would, cause, would, would see that as an abomination, that this was the way that they were born, and that I should not... Um, and that the book somehow got it wrong. And so when I learned that it was written by man, I kind of just adopted that and determined that uh, they had completely misconstrued it. And it allowed me to um, dismiss the Bible at that point. So moving forward, I also, um, after dismissing the Bible, I was also kind of looking at the church thing. And I had a bit of a complex because um, the black churches tend to last uh, hours, like three, four hours during the day. And for football fans, that's a bit of an issue. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I started to go to other churches. I started with that. I went to Catholic churches um, and some of the churches that were a lot shorter than um, <laughs> the traditional black churches. Um, but when I learned that um, not all good Christians had to go to church, you just had to have your own personal relationship, if you will, with God and or Jesus, um, then you'd be okay. And so it allowed me to be a football fan and still be a believer. Um, but I, I really started to, again, so I really started to move away from the, the more traditional rituals of Christianity. And so by the time I left high school, I had rejected both the Bible and the church 
Um, and what it left me as, I was kind of like a praying theist, if that even makes sense. So I believe that there was something out there, but um, that, that something didn't. Um, it was intervening at times, but maybe not all the time. I don't know what I was thinking. I just wanted to um, kind of not have to dismiss everything that I had learned about religion. And so um, that's where I was. I, I prayed for like uh, uh, mostly important things, like to end poverty and things like that. Um, I don't want to sound like I, I always pray for that. I mean, every once in a while to pray for a test that I was going, that I didn't study for. But for the most part, it was the larger issues that, you know, uh, that I, I wish to see solved. And so, um, yeah, again, by the time I left high school, that's where I was. I was a theist, and I prayed every once in a while, and I felt like it. Then I go to undergrad, and by junior year, I was, I went to Brooklyn College, which is a liberal arts school, and that was the third college. I, had, I was one of those people finding myself in college to know what I wanted to really uh, major in undergrad, and so um, the third college is kind of the last college for me. <laughs> um, I know my parents were probably tired of seeing me switch schools back and forth um, since they were putting in the bills. <laughs> my dad's over there, so I keep looking over there. So. <laughs> um, but anyway, sorry. So I um, went to Brooklyn College, and I um, had to take um, what class was that? Philosophy 101 which requires you to put all of your beliefs on the table and realize and, and uh, think about why you believe what you believe. And so I was already struggling with religion at that point. And when I kind of put religion out there, it's like, why do I believe what I believe? It's because somebody else told me that, you know, this is a good God and you should believe. So um, I basically became an atheist um, at that point, so I'm, I'm in my junior year of, of college, but uh, there were two issues. Number one, I didn't know what an atheist was. I thought an atheist was a devil worshiper, and so, of course, I, would, I didn't worship the devil. I wasn't an atheist, and um, two, I didn't know any other atheists, and so um, I figured, you know, I'd be semi-open about my religious stance, and um, I decided, um, you know, I would tell, if somebody new came into my life, I would say, hey, you know, I'm an atheist. But all my friends, I didn't want them to know that I was an atheist. And um, so that's where, um, that's where I, I really began to, um, I guess, realize the importance of, of coming out. Uh, because I, I started to feel like I wasn't being honest with myself and, and, and friends and family things of that nature. So I decided to come out to my dad because he just seemed more accepting of it than my mom would be. Um, and that's what I found out, that he was an atheist. And uh, that was a fun conversation. Um, and so after that, um, I wanted to look on, I realized I tried to go to some atheist events and I was always the only black person. And um, it shouldn't matter, but it does matter. And you know, people would come up to me and like, oh my gosh, you're the first black atheist that I've ever met. Really? Um, but I knew that that wasn't uncommon because I didn't know any other, um, I mean, uh, any other black atheist or open black atheist. And so I started to look out for, for people. I went on Facebook. I found a black atheist group that was started, that was started by um, Mario Stanton, um, who's a, an atheist in um, St. Louis, Missouri. And um, it's, a, it's an online group, but they don't, it's just, that's all it is, it's an online group. And I wanted to do more. I wanted to do um, activism, and I decided to, to, to form Black Atheists of America. And um, part of that was also, also had to do with um, more studies in undergrad where I was able to look at other cultures and other religions um, and see how religion has possibly helped with cohesiveness, although you don't necessarily need religion for that. Um, but also see the damage that um, religion can, can bring, um, when it, especially when it cripples uh, thinking skills and um, forces people to do things where they think they're doing good, um, but they're not. Um, one of the examples um, that I can think of immediately is, is faith healing, um, where parents obviously they care for their kids and they want to um, help their kids the best way that they know how, but they honestly believe that um, healing and infection is best served by not going to the doctor, but by going to someone who has no background in medicine. 
um, or a, a faith healer. And so um, those are the areas that I really wanted to um, address with um, my, um, with Black Atheists of America, my organization. Um, part of the reason that I wanted to um, deal with diversity is the fact that is because there are so many different, um, people are so passionate, uh, atheists included, about their belief. Uh, I, I can speak um, from speaking to a lot of atheists, uh, from drawing from their experiences, it, it feels as if they've been lied to their entire life, and so they're frustrated. And you know, a lot of times, a lot of people come to me, well, we just read the Bible. And I'm like, not only do I read the Bible, um, shameless plug here, but we have a series where we read the Bible on YouTube, um, page by page. Because a lot of people that um, are Christians don't actually read their Bible. They don't, they're unfamiliar with it. Or it just, uh, spoke to, you know, to just pray hard enough or, you know, they're, as if there's something wrong with what um, the atheist has done or as, if, or as if we're completely unfamiliar with uh, Christianity or, or religion just generally. And, and that's oftentimes not the case. It's oftentimes a, a, a long struggle. There's very few um, black atheists in this country who grow up in households that are, that are um, non-religious at best. Um, atheists, uh, I know of one uh, person I've met thus far that grew up in an atheist household. That's the person of color. Um, and so with the organization, I, I really wanted to not necessarily could, to get people talking, to get people to um, talk about uh, why they believe what they believe, uh, and not necessarily condemn a person just because their beliefs are, are, are different. Um, I don't think that the belief in a religion is immediately harmful. It's just what actions are taken that um, may have severe adverse effects. Uh, um, I think that's where it becomes an issue. And um, and so I believe that uh, with the organization, we uh, are best served by uh, respecting the individual and, and uh, opening the discussion as to why we don't believe what, we, what they believe and they can um, discuss, you know, other members of the community can discuss um, why they believe, what they believe, and what their religion has done for them. Um, the second issue uh, that I, I kind of wanted to touch on was uh, the internet. Um, and the internet has played a, a, a major role in um, forming, I guess, in, in getting people to realize that there is a lot of diversity within the religious community, because it's no longer um, you're this individual in this community where you, um, everybody in your community believes what you believe, but the community basically shares a religion, and that's part of the uh, cohesiveness. It is a lot easier to get access to people that um, believe vastly different belief systems. I mean, even polytheistic, which is a foreign um, idea uh, to, to some people. And so with the internet, we, we're beginning to see that there are a lot of people that believe vastly different belief systems. And um, in order to, um, I guess, help the uh, communities at large, I think it's best to kind of look at um, what it is that we can, how we can work together and, um, you know, respect, I guess, the diversity and, and try to strive for um, better solutions. Uh, to improve uh, social conditions in, in um, the communities. So um, I think that's all I have. <laughs> um, thank you for listening. Yes? Good morning, and thank you for being here today. Thank you. How did you handle some, uh, I'm making an assumption, how did you handle some of the rejection from your friends and your family? You said, at one point you said you didn't want to share your beliefs with your friends? Um, well, I actually had an oddly positive response because I've always been that quirky person. So it's uh, she's doing her kind of thing. Or um, I know with my mom, I didn't have an ad, she didn't have an adverse um, reaction to it, but uh, she still up the thought that I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to a phase for the past, I guess, six, eight years now. Eight years. So um, some people think I'm going through a phase. Some people, uh, I've lost two friends. But um, honestly, um, I, I do believe that you can outgrow friendships. I do believe that when you grow, you can outgrow relationships. I, don't, um, I know it may sound like a negative thing, but I actually think it's a positive thing. Um, you 
you know, obtain new friends. So um, for the ones I lost, it, it's probably best for, for both of us. And for the ones that I've gained, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Yes? <coughs> uh, I'm delighted to hear you uh, to speak. Uh, you probably don't realize that we have quite a number of people here today who share your non-beliefs. As a matter of fact, we're meeting tomorrow night. And if you'd like to join us, we have a little atheist, secular, humanist, agnostic meeting that okay. once a month. So you're very welcome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> what time is it? Uh, uh, have you ever uh, attempted to explore and join um, social organizations like the Ethical Cultural Society and or read intellectuals, humanist intellectuals like Aldous Huxley? They're all uh, leaning toward what you believe and the uh, atheistic Brown, have you been a, 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 exposed to those organizations or those intellectuals? Not um, that organization. I have, um, um, no, as far as uh, reading about individuals, um, that I, I know that atheism in the black community is not something new, it's just something that's not often spoken about. So I, I have read on uh, A. Philip Randolph and his experiences, Langston Hughes, um, Hubert Harrison. Um, so I, I, I have read about individuals that are or were leaning toward atheism or at best were non-religious. Um, but um, so I guess yes to the second part of your question and to the first part. Um, other organizations that I have teamed up with are African Americans for Humanism. They have a chapter in Harlem. And we often do events together on um, black non-believers in, um, where are they? they're in, uh, they're based in Atlanta, but they're a national organization um, similar to mine. So I have reached out to other organizations. Yes, good. Yep. Yes? Um, you seem um, uh, to be, you know, technologically with it. I mean, and uh, when you're in the world of, of technology, and I'm just wondering if uh, what you do is uh, your connections are based more on internet, um, you know, connections and, and, and reaching out that way, or do you also have an aspect of what you do that um, actually gets together with people uh, rather than just <coughs> out there on the internet? Right. Uh, and what kinds of events and what kinds of um, missions do you Okay, so yes, we have um, we have events. We're having an event on um, the 24th of this month. It's called Day of Solidarity. It's going to be in Harlem um, from 1 to 4 p.m. Um, and I think it's at 583 Riverside Drive. I have to look it up. But um, it's an event where we just kind of get together and we um, discuss some of our experiences. Um, the Day of Solidarity is an annual event. It's the last Sunday of every uh, of February. Um, every it was started last year. This is the, the second year. And um, last year we kind of just had speakers come in. I was one of the speakers, and um, we talked about human rights and again uh, experiences. This year I actually changed it a little bit, and we're it's, I made it a networking event because people are oftentimes um, not. They're not out. A lot of a lot of black atheists are not out. Uh, a lot of people, uh, or atheists generally, are just not out. And so I, I have a, a networking event, which I have some fun networking games where uh, it's going to basically force people to talk to other people um, within the community and get to know other people within the community. I also did one an event which kind of happened last time, which is normal, where you know you get there, you're with your friends, and you and your friend is over here, and you know these friends are over here. I really wanted people to interact to get to know each other. And I, I've heard, and I've done that in other, um, I used to have Wednesday night when I started up again, but it was Wednesday night, every Wednesday night, we used to have an after work mixer at, in New York City. And uh, it was very informal from 7.30 to 9 on Wednesdays after work. And um, I've had, just even yesterday, we had a, a photo shoot for the Day of Solidarity. 
And a girl came to me and said she met a, a wonderful friend. She made a wonderful friend because of that event. So it's very important to um, make those connections in person. Uh, uh, predominant, I mean, my largest following is online because that's how I started. Uh, but uh, it is important for us to, to get in the community. So I do do community events. As far as our goal, my organization um, very much focuses on education. And so we have a, a program called Science Cube. Um, and in that program, we give, um, it's basically set up where a, a teacher um, in an underserved area will give us a list of supplies that she needs to better educate her children, uh, science teachers. And we take that list, uh, we buy up to $600 uh, on that list, it depends on what they're, approved to, uh, what they're approved for. Most teachers are approved for the full amount of the grant, $600. We buy as many supplies as we can off of that list, and we donate the supplies to the, to the school. Um, so yeah, we, we are definitely out there in the community. Um, we are working on, um, hopefully, <coughs> next year, we are looking to do an after-school program where we uh, focus on developing critical thinking skills among young age children and also helping them with their homework. Um, a lot of the after-school programs in, in, in New York um, for the uh, kids that um, come from uh, low-income areas uh, they, they're usually just areas where you stash your kids. It's not, they're not really doing anything for the children. They, they play and then by the time a parent picks them up, they gotta go home. They still have to help them with their homework, which is just, you know, ridiculous. And so we wanted to make an affordable um, after school program for people in, in low, low income areas. So we're kind of working with the government um, to see if we can do some type of voucher program there. So, oh, I Um, I surely don't want to make light of the subject because I realize how serious it is. But I uh, want to share with everyone a comment on this subject that I just read recently by Woody Allen. And he said, why are so many people trying so hard to find God when it's hard to get a good plumber on the weekend? <laughs> Well, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.